What's up guys? Today I bring you a head-to-head -head comparison between two new Vivo smartphones. So we have the Vivo V30 versus the Vivo V30 Pro. So both are mid-range smartphones powered by four nanometer processors, although one is powered by MediaTek and the other one is powered by Snapdragon. So in this video, we are simply trying to find out what are the main differences between these two smartphones. So let's start off with a quick side-by-side -side of the specs. Now, if you want to study the specs, pause the video. If not, let the games begin. And before we move on, I'll give you guys five seconds to like the video, sub to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you've already done it, then welcome to the Chicks Tech family. Now, in case you're wondering about the prices, I have no idea what the pricing will be as this info has not been shared yet. But I will leave the latest pricing info in the description box for your convenience. Now, let's talk design and feel. So how do they feel in my hands? Well, both phones are super slim and light, both only 7.45 millimeters in thickness. In fact, these are Vivo's slimmest smartphones they have ever made that have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Weight wise, they are very similar. That's 186 grams versus 188 grams. I have both phones in the same color. The color is called Bloom White with this rather nice 3D flower petal design. Loving that color and design. Both phones do curve around the edges with curved corners. Both look super premium in design and are not prone to fingerprints or smudges. So very nice finish and again both feel impressively slim. Build quality appears to be the same. Both have metal frames going all the way around with high performance shot glass on the front and the cameras are also protected by 2.5D glass and you have raised metal camera bumps. Now the V30 and the V30 Pro side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They look exactly the same, especially if you've got the same colors in front of you. In the hands, they both feel exactly the same. Um, if you want to tell them apart, if you closer look at the camera modules, you will see the ZSIS logo in the Pro model and you don't have that in the standard model. And you've got three sensors versus two sensors. So really, if you want to tell them apart, you just have to look for the ZC's logo. Now, both of these phones are available to buy in four different colors, and each color has its own special design and effect. All right, so let's quickly compare the ports. At the bottom, first of all, you can see exactly the same layout, loudspeaker, Type-C port, microphone, and SIM card tray. So, so both phones accept dual 5G SIM cards, and there is no micro SD card slot. On this side, we have nothing. On the other side, we have volume rocker and power buttons. And at the top of the phone, you can see secondary microphone and it says professional portrait. A quick test to confirm whether this has an IR blaster or not. And you can see the result in front of you. These phones do not have an IR blaster. Now let's talk about the displays. Both phones have exactly the same beautiful 6.78 inch AMOLED 120Hz displays and both do support smart switch so it can dynamically change the refresh rate based on what you're doing or you have the option to go 60 hertz all the time or 120 hertz all the time. Now a surprising feature on the V30 is the ability to change resolution. You can't do that on the Pro model. So both phones are 2800 by 1260 but the standard V30 allows you to switch it down to 2400 by 1080 to preserve battery whereas the Pro model doesn't let you do that. Instead you have 2800 by 1260 all the time. Now other similarities, both phones have the same 5000 milliamp hour battery with the same 80 watt flash charger included in the box and inside the box you will also find your charging cables paperwork and they both come with exactly the same silicon clear TPU case. Now let's talk about the processing power. Both phones are powered by a 4 nanometer octa-core chipset. The V30 has the new Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 clocked at 2.63 gigahertz and the V30 Pro is powered by MediaTek's 8200 clocked at 3.1 gigahertz. For graphics, we have Adreno 720 versus Mali G610. Furthermore, both phones feature LPDDR5 RAM and UFS 3.1 storage. And I have 12 plus 512 variants of both phones. Now the RAM can be extended with virtual RAM and you only have the option to switch it on or off. It will give you an additional 12 gigs of RAM and you can see they are on by default on both. So you don't have the option to choose lesser RAM extension of two gigs or six gigs. You only have the option to switch it on to give you an extension of 12 gigs. So bringing that total RAM on both phones, 24 gigabytes each. Furthermore, just want to confirm neither phone supports micro SD expansion or headphone jacks, but both phones do support dual SIM 5G. 
now I want to check out a bit of gaming. So let's open up Call of Duty Mobile on both phones. Now if I grab one of the phones, I just want to show you. If we swipe in from the side, you will see a gaming overlay. It works on both. You've got exactly the same options. So you can have three different modes. Battery saver mode, you can have balance mode, or you can have boost mode. Amongst that, there are many other gaming features that you can activate and play around with. So quick look at Call of Duty graphic settings on the V30 standard model. So highest graphics selectable is high and highest frame rate selectable is max. And the pro model allows you to actually very high and max. And you have the option for ultra frame rate as well. But when you tap that, it will drop the graphics down to low. So let's check out some gameplay. All right, starting off with the V30 Call of Duty gameplay. Here we go. Now it's time to test the pro model. So impressive gaming performance on both phones. Now let's talk about speakers. Both phones have single bottom firing speakers. So neither phone has dual speakers. There are no speakers on the top. You've only got one single bottom speaker and the sound quality appears to be the same, but I am gonna give you guys a quick test. So as you guys just heard, they sound exactly the same. So single loud bottom firing speakers on both phones. All right, so now let's check out the cameras. Both phones have interesting cameras. Although we have the same camera bump design, the sensors are slightly different. The V30 features dual 50 megapixel rear sensors. That's 50 megapixel true color main sensor and a 50 megapixel ultra wide. And then if we flip the phone around, you have a 50 megapixel selfie camera on the front. Now in comparison, the V30 Pro has triple 50 megapixel rear sensors and this phone's cameras have been co-engineered with ZCs. That's 50 megapixel true color main sensor, you get a 50 megapixel ultra wide and you get a 50 megapixel ZCs professional portrait sensor. And on the front we have the same 50 megapixel selfie camera. So every single camera on both phones are basically 50 megapixels, but the Pro model comes with an extra camera. Let's check out some samples. Okay, so let's start off with some video recording. V30 Pro can shoot in 4K 60 max, but with no image stabilization. And the V30 does 4K 30 max, but you get image stabilization, and you can see how they both compare. Okay, so now I decided to even the odds by setting the resolution 4K30 on both cameras. And this time the V30 Pro does have stabilization and it's actually smoother than the V30. Let me know what you guys think. And now it's time for some video from the front cameras. Maximum resolutions, V30 Pro shoots at 4K60 and V30 shoots at 4K30 max. And both videos look nice and stable. However, if you look to the sky, you will see more detail in the standard V30 model. So it's handling the dynamic range a bit better. All right, so now let's compare photos, starting off with the zoom. So this is 1x zoom. This is 2x zoom. You are now looking at 5x zoom. This is 10x zoom and the maximum digital zoom on both phones, 20x zoom. Let me know your thoughts. Which one do you think has the better digital zoom? Okay, so here are some more samples in the standard photo mode. And as you guys can see, not much separating them, pretty even quality, probably the same sensor.
Okay, it's time for some selfies. And I'm really liking the results on both. Clarity is great. Dynamic range is also spot on. The results are nearly the same. Just a slight difference with the skin tones. And I think the V30 Pro was the most accurate when it comes to skin tones. And here are some ultra wide samples. And again, both producing great results and very similar results. It could be the same sensor again. Let me know otherwise. Okay, so moving on to indoor shots and both cameras doing a great job of low light photos. So what do you guys think of the cameras? Do let me know in the comments. All right, so time to check out the system info and DRMs. DRM info shows Google Widevine level one for both phones. And here is CPU-Z where you can check out the clock speeds. And you can see there Adreno 720 versus Mali G610. And if we check out the Android versions of both phones, you can see it's Android version 14 with FunTouch OS 14 on top. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench, single core score of 1136 versus 1216, and multi-core score 3173 versus 3598. And in the Antutu benchmark test, the V30 scores 824K and the V30 Pro scores 983K. And we'll also have a quick look at the temperatures. You can see starting temperatures on both phones, 30 degrees and 29.4 degrees. And after concluding the test, 36.5 degrees versus 36 degrees. So more or less the same temperatures start and finish. And in case you're wondering how these phones stack up against the other big smartphones of this year, well, this is my top smartphone performance chart showing you all the latest smartphones and seeing how they compare with each other. And all the phones are ranked by Antutu benchmark scores. So based on the performance, the Vivo 30 Pro has taken position 12 and the Vivo 30 has taken position 13. So both phones performed quite similar in Antutu benchmarks. Performance wise, you can expect a slightly better performance than the Xiaomi Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, but lesser performance than the Poco X6 Pro. So that should give you a good idea of where these two phones sit on my chart. Now you can view all my latest charts online and completely free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was my comparison test between the Vivo V30 versus the V30 Pro. Now to sum this one up, you don't get any wireless charging or micro SD expansion in either phone. There is also no IR blaster and another letdown is both phones have single bottom firing speakers. Even though they are very good quality speakers, they're very clear and loud, stereo speakers are just the standard expectation. And I think the Pro model should have had stereo and Atmos sound. But nevertheless, both phones offer an amazing overall experience. And to find out more info on this smartphone, including price and offers, do check out the links in the description box. Hopefully this video has helped you see the main differences between these two smartphones. Also, do let me know in the comments which two phones you are considering between. And the best idea gets a comparison video and a shout out in that video. Now if you want to see more unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the notification bell. We're trying to push this channel to 500k this year. That's the target. Help me achieve it guys. Let's go.